Okay, this is a classic half-life problem. Let's go ahead and set it up and see what we have and what we're looking for. Okay, so we're told that an investigator collects a sample of a radioactive isotope with an activity of 370,000 becquerels. 48 hours later, the activity is 120,000 becquerels. Okay, so we have some sort of a sample, and it starts with an activity of 370,000 becquerels. Now we're going to take that and let that be R0. That's our initial activity. 48 hours pass. So after 48 hours, we end up with the same sample, but now it has an activity of 120,000 becquerels. And the question asks this. The question asks, what is the half-life of the sample? Well, let's do an assessment before we even start, okay? I wanted to go ahead and take a look at our final assessment. We know that a half-life is the amount of time for the sample to decay by half. So if it starts with 370,000 becquerels, after one half-life, it's down to about 185, and after another half-life, it's down to about um, just, sh just over 90,000 becquerels. This is actually 120,000 becquerels, so 48 hours is a bit less than two half-lives, because after two half-lives, it would be down to something close to 90,000 becquerels, and it isn't down that far. So I'm expecting this to be a little bit less than two half-lives, and so I want something just greater than, but close to 24 hours. That's what I'm expecting to find for my half-life, okay? So we can do our calculation, and then we'll check against this result when we're finished. Now notice this. I'm saying I'm doing a calculation for the decrease in the activity, but the decrease in the activity is the same as the decrease in the number of atoms because the activity is just proportional to the number of atoms you have. If you have half as many atoms, you have half as great an activity. So it's no surprise that the basic relationships for activity mirror those for the number of atoms. The activity at some time t is equal to an initial activity times one half to the t over t one half. That's our basic relationship for the decay of the activity. So we have our basic equation, we have our initial activity, we have our final activity, we also have a time we're ready to solve. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this equation but put in values, okay? So my equation is this r is equal to r0 times 1 half to the t over t 1 half. The activity at 48 hours is 120,000 becquerels. The initial activity was 370,000 becquerels. The time is 48 hours. So I'm going to leave that in hours, and then I put the half-life here, and notice this. These two are a ratio that appears in the exponent. If I have my time in hours, I'm going to calculate my half-life in the same unit, so I'm going to get a half-life in hours. The only restriction is these two things have to be in the same units. They could be in hours or minutes or seconds or days. They just have to be the same. So then what I'm going to do is divide, divide both sides of the equation by 370,000 becquerels. So I get 120,000 over 370,000 is equal to 1 half to the power of 48 hours over t 1 half. Then what I'm going to do is take a natural logarithm of both sides. Natural logarithm of 120,000 over 370,000 is equal to the natural logarithm of 1 half times 48 hours over t one half. Let's go ahead and compute these logarithms. This expression reduces to negative 1.126, and I'm keeping some extra decimal places for now. Natural logarithm of one half is negative 0 0.6931, and then it's times 48 hours divided by t one half. The only thing I don't know in this expression is t one half. Now notice this, the negative signs cancel, as they must, so this goes away, and then I'm left with an expression where everything's positive, the only thing I don't know is t1 half, and if I do some algebra, I get this, I get t1 half 
is equal to 29.5 hours, but we need to round to two significant figures because this is a two significant figure problem, as we can see from the numbers we get at the start. And so I got the half-life is 30 hours. And let's assess. We said that the half-life should be greater than, but approximately equal to 24 hours. And in fact, that's what we find. And check it out. If the half-life is 30 hours, after 60 hours, it'll decay to one-fourth of its original activity. And so it's going to be just over 90,000. So it sounds like everything works out exactly as planned. Our final result matches our expectations of how the world works.